Many cattle ranchers are losing thousands of dollars every single year, and they don't even see it happening. It's not from theft or a bad market or a broken down tractor. It's a silent, creeping loss that eats away at your bottom line pound by pound. It's the invisible weight that your cattle should have gained, but never did. Today, we're going to shine a light into those dark corners of your operation. We will uncover the hidden diseases that are quietly killing your weight gain. And more importantly, we'll show you exactly how to fight back. Because in the cattle business, every single pound counts. And what you're about to learn could be the difference between a year of profit and a year of frustration. Let's be clear. When we talk about profit and cattle ranching, we are fundamentally talking about weight. Whether you're selling weaned calves, yearlings, or finished steers, your paycheck is determined by the scale. So when an animal's growth is stunted, even by just a few percentage points, you are losing money. The problem is, many of the costliest diseases don't always present with dramatic, obvious signs like a high fever or a downer cow. Instead, they work quietly as subclinical infections. This means the animal looks okay, not great, but okay. It's still eating, still walking around, but inside a battle is raging. And that battle is consuming the energy that should be going into building muscle and frame. This is the danger zone where profits vanish. So let's dive into the first and perhaps the most common culprit, internal parasites. We're talking about stomach worms, intestinal worms, and lung worms. Think of these parasites as microscopic nutrient thieves living inside your cattle. For every mouthful of high-quality grass or expensive feed your animal consumes, these parasites take their cut first. They damage the lining of the stomach and intestines, which reduces the animal's ability to absorb nutrients from its food. So, you're paying for good nutrition that your cattle can't even use effectively. Have you ever had a group of calves that just seem to be poor doers? They look a little rough, their hair coat isn't slick, and they just lag behind the others no matter how much you feed them. That is the classic sign of a heavy parasite burden. And here's the biggest mistake ranchers make. They deworm on a fixed calendar schedule without knowing what they're fighting or if they even need to fight it. They might deworm every spring and every fall, year after year, using the same product. This approach not only wastes money on treatment when it might not be needed, but it also leads to a much bigger problem, dewormer resistance. The parasites that survive the treatment pass on their resistant genes, and over time, your dewormers simply stop working. So, what's the smart approach? It's called strategic deworming. First, work with a veterinarian to conduct a fecal egg count on a sample of your herd. This simple test tells you which parasites you have and how heavy the infestation is. It takes the guesswork out of the equation. Second, manage your pastures. The parasite life cycle depends on eggs being passed in the manure and then re-ingested by cattle as they graze. By rotating your pastures and not overgrazing, you break this cycle. You give the sun and the heat time to kill the larvae in the pasture, drastically reducing the exposure to your animals. This integrated approach, combining testing with smart grazing, is far more effective and sustainable than just pouring chemicals without a plan. It saves money, protects the effectiveness of your dewormers, and most importantly, it lets your cattle keep the nutrients you work so hard to provide them. Now, let's move on to our second enemy of weight gain. This one isn't a slow thief, it's a sudden assassin that often targets your best, fastest growing calves, clostridial diseases. The most famous of these is blackleg, and the story is almost always the same. You check your cattle in the evening and everything looks perfect. The calves are healthy, vigorous, and gaining weight beautifully. You come back the next morning and one of the best ones is dead. There were no signs of a struggle, it just died. This is the tragic reality of blackleg. It's caused by a bacteria, Clostridium shovoi, whose spores live in the soil, sometimes for decades. Cattle ingest these spores while grazing. 
the spores can then lie dormant in the muscle tissue for a long time. The trigger is often a simple bruise, maybe from bumping into another animal or a fence post. This minor, unnoticeable injury creates the low oxygen environment the bacteria needs to activate, multiply, and release powerful toxins. These toxins destroy the surrounding muscle and cause rapid systemic shock. Death often occurs in less than 24 hours. When an animal is fighting an infection this aggressive, its body isn't thinking about gaining weight. All resources are diverted to a fight it's destined to lose. And the real tragedy? Blackleg, along with other clostridial diseases like tetanus and malignant edema, is almost 100% preventable. The common mistake here is not a mistake in treatment because there is no effective treatment. The mistake is in prevention. Some ranchers might skip vaccinations to save a few dollars per head. This is a catastrophic gamble. A single dead calf will cost you far more than the price of vaccinating your entire herd for years. The best practice is non-negotiable. Vaccinate. A simple seven-way or eight-way clostridial vaccine provides excellent protection. Calves should be vaccinated between two and four months of age with a booster shot given about four to six weeks later, according to the product label and your vet's recommendation. This is one of the highest return investments you can make in your herd's health. Don't wait until you find a dead calf to take it seriously. By then, it's already too late. Protecting your herd from these sudden, fatal diseases ensures your fastest growing animals actually make it to market. Finally, let's talk about a complex and costly problem, especially for producers who buy or transport cattle. Bovine Respiratory Disease, or BRD. Many call it shipping fever, but it's much more than that. BRD is not one single disease. It's a perfect storm, a complex interaction between stress, viral infections, and secondary bacterial infections. It starts with stress. Think about what a calf goes through during weaning, transportation, and commingling with new animals. Its entire world is turned upside down. This stress weakens its immune system. This creates an open door for common respiratory viruses to take hold. These viruses then damage the respiratory tract, paving the way for dangerous bacteria to invade the lungs, causing severe pneumonia. An animal with BRD will look lethargic. It will have a drooping head, nasal discharge, and a cough. But most importantly for our discussion, it will stop eating. An animal that doesn't eat doesn't gain weight. In fact, it loses weight fast. Even if the animal survives and is treated with antibiotics, the damage is often done. The lungs can be permanently scarred, reducing the animal's efficiency for the rest of its life. That one sickness event can mean it never catches up to its herdmates on the scale. Studies have shown that calves treated for BRD can weigh 50 pounds less at sale time than their healthy counterparts. 50 pounds. Multiply that by the market price and you can see how devastating this disease is to your wallet. The common mistake is to focus only on the treatment, not the cause. Waiting until a calf is sick and then hitting it with antibiotics is reactive, expensive, and often too late to prevent performance losses. The best practice is proactive management centered on reducing stress. This is called preconditioning. Before you ship calves, wean them at least 30 to 45 days in advance. Get them used to eating from a bunk and drinking from a water trough. Ensure they are fully vaccinated before they face the stress of transport. Low stress handling techniques, good ventilation, and proper nutrition are not just nice to have things, they are your primary defense against BRD. By managing stress, you keep the immune system strong and you slam the door on the viruses and bacteria that are waiting for their chance to attack. So we've covered the nutrient thieves of internal parasites, the sudden assassins of clostridial diseases, and the stress-fueled fire of BRD. The common thread through all of these is that prevention is always, always more profitable than treatment. Being a successful cattle rancher is not just about genetics and feed, it's about being a proactive, observant manager of animal health. It's about stopping problems before they start. It's about protecting every single pound of potential your cattle have. The health of your herd is the foundation of your business. The knowledge you gain and apply today directly translates to a heavier, 
healthier and more profitable herd tomorrow. And that's why we created this channel. We are building a community of cattle producers, from beginners to seasoned experts, who are dedicated to raising better cattle and building stronger businesses. If you found this information valuable, if it sparked an idea or confirmed a suspicion you had, then help us grow this community. First, hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to ensure you don't miss our future videos, where we'll dive even deeper into topics like nutrition, genetics, and herd management. Second, leave a comment below. What's the biggest health challenge you face on your ranch? Sharing your experience helps everyone learn, and we read every single comment. Finally, if you know another rancher, a student, or anyone who could benefit from this video, please share it with them. We are all in this together, and by sharing knowledge, we lift the entire industry. Thank you for investing your time with us today. Let's continue to learn and grow together.